Yo, peeps, what's popping? Ryan Williams, AFC, here with your preview for Arsenal versus Crystal Palace. And if you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And of course, leave us a comment. So, what can we expect from Arsenal hosting Crystal Palace? Coming off the Europa League victory, um, given the fact that Pepe come off the bench and scored two magnificent free kicks. I have to say, oh, classy free kicks right in the top bins. But that doesn't overshadow the first half. Now, the first half, and for this Europa League team that we've been seeing playing well, doing decent, you know, defensively, like, mm, do you know what I mean? But yeah, still questions on defence. I can't, I can't let that rest. But it was really, really poor. You can check my review. I'm not even going to really get back into it on how I felt with that. But it was a poor game. And again, you have to look at Sheffield United where we went um, and we lost 1-0 at Bramall Lane. And even that game looked poor. Do you know what I mean? Pepe was pretty much our shining light that game and it didn't really work out. And, you know, where we see individual players stepping up, like Matteo Guendouzi, again, putting in another performance. When he come off the bench in the Europa League, um, I don't know, man. I don't know how to feel going, going into this game, guys. I've got to be real with you. Like, to me, like, you have to look at it. Like, we ain't really been doing too well defensively. Um, a style of play is missing, etc. We all know that. And, you know, basic defending doesn't seem to agree with Arsenal. All the defenders are just... <sighs> and then we got defenders that need to play that we bought and we're told that we're fully fit. There's that. We have a very, very bad creativity issue right now. We we know the issues with Mez Meza Ozil. And of course, we will know about him and Emery um, having a little chat, shall we say, on the training ground. And even that, we didn't even see Ozil in the team. And then there was more posts from Ozil. He make me laugh and etc. And it's just, it's just not really good for us right now. I mean, we just had a summer where we splashed out quite a lot of money. And since then, since the start of the season, yes, we've we've won games, but have we looked convincing? I mean, we the the games we threw away like Watford, um, Spurs, we could have won it, but then it, but you know, it was what it was. Uh, Manchester United at Old Trafford, a, a ground we haven't won in so many years. It was probably up, probably our best chance. Do you know what I mean? But. It didn't happen for us. And do you know what I mean? We've just been we've come back from games like even Aston Villa, ten men down, and we come back and won three two. Like, do you know what I'm saying? And even the Europa League game just gone. You know, we were two one down. We were one nil down, went one one, and then we went two one down. And then Pepe had to come off the bench and literally get the goal, get get us the victory. With a free with the equalizer and the winner. So, I mean, we ain't really very well, very good at um, controlling the game, are we? And this is a major concern because, again, we've seen the likes of Crystal Palace. We already suffered a loss from them last season. And when you kind of accumulate the points, how we only missed off by a point or two off top four last season, that was a game we, we could have won. And we could have got three points, but we didn't. We dropped and lost all three. So, this game is important. We are a point in front of Crystal Palace in the table. Funny enough, Sheffield United are seventh right now. So, if we fall back, if we lose or even draw and Sheffield United win the next game, we don't, then we're in big trouble already. And I know it's early, a lot of people saying it's early, and I hear that, but I'm sorry. But if we don't set an example and a stamp in the Premier League saying we're looking to get top four this season, then 
right now is all for nothing. Do you know what I'm saying? So right now we need to be taking these games seriously. We need to be going out there and busting a gut. It's as simple as that. The problem is, you know, like the way the manager's setting up the team, like Torreira playing like he's a number 10, it doesn't make sense. Well, we all know he's a DM. Do you know what I mean? Last season, he had a very good season until probably come back from that suspension after he got sent off in the Tottenham game. And he just looked out of it. He just didn't look like Torreira of old. He just looked off the pace. But that's what happens when the manager doesn't really play you that much. And then now he's trying to utilise you more. A replacement of Ozil, which doesn't make any sense. Well, we got a replacement in Sabias, but Sabias is playing a deeper role, like with Guendouzi. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So it is what it is. So without the moaning, let's just get into the starting eleven for me. Um, in goal, of course, we're gonna go with Burton Leno. I didn't really feel we had a good game at Sheffield United. There was a lot of um, the stuff that I pretty much said in that preview. I said, listen, he's got a have some serious good decision making because you cannot be passing the ball out from the back when you see three oppositional strikers on the edge of the 18 yard box. It doesn't make any sense. So, Leno, you need to sort it out. Um, right back, Callum Chambers. I think he's been putting in one hell of a performance lately. Um, if you look at the last. I think you look at every game he's played in. I mean, he's played he's played well. You know, the last game he slipped off. Do you know what I mean? Everyone was poor that night. Do you know what I mean? Probably apart from Pepe. Apart from that chance Pepe missed. And, uh, you know, you can't cut off the rest of the game. He was probably the best player. And you know what I mean? But regardless of that, Callum Chambers sticks in that right-back position. Obviously, better and. I wouldn't want to risk that quite yet. I'd rather wait a little. I'll give Benner in some time. Keep playing him in the cup games and see how he is. Um, the centre-backs, uh, we're more than likely probably going to see David Luiz and Socrates. So if that it is, if that's where it is, then these two need to sort it out and not, and not let Zaha get the best of them because he is a very tricky player. He's going to want to prove a point. Obviously, we all know he was linked to us in the summer and obviously the move didn't happen and we opted to get Nicolas Pepe in return. So, he's going to be wanting to, make, wanting to make a statement. Of course, this is a club that he supports himself. So, for him to miss out on his big move, dream move, last summer, you know he's going to want to turn up with the team he's with like he did last season. So, these guys need to be strong. Socrates... And David Luiz. Now the left back situation. Me personally. And I'm going to say this. Kieran Tierney has to start this game. It's as simple as that. The reason why Kieran Tierney has to start this game. Because he's quick. He's strong. He can get back when needed. And on top of that. He can pick a pass. He can pick a pass. We've seen it in the Europa League. Time and time again. You can ask Gabriel Martinelli. He'll tell you himself. And I'm sure Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Lacazette, or even Pepe, if they if he even tries to bring him in, or Pepe loves to cut in, can even deliver that. So I don't see why not. And plus, Emery has come out and said that he's fit. He didn't go with the international squad because they didn't really want to risk anything. They wanted Kieran Tierney fully 100% fit. And he didn't play at all in the Sheffield United loss at Bramall Lane. And he played what, 90 minutes off the Europa League game against Vitora. And yeah, he was at fault for the first goal. But let's be honest, no one was really tracking back and helping him. And that seems to be a problem with the wingbacks. When they track back and then they're one-on-one -on -one with the oppositional winger, you don't see our winger really tracking back. They're kind of leaving them for dead. It's like, bro, come on, get back. And that's a problem. But to be honest... Due to the fact that Kalasanac's end product is so poor, Kieran Tierney's in there. Um, we're more than likely going to see Granite Xhaka in the team. He he is the club captain going forward. So, for me, Xhaka needs to, you know, be on his best game. 
we know the transition from him is is slow, and to be honest, it's more quicker with you got Guendouzi carrying the ball alongside him, and Terea, as he's just more agile, he's more quick. But we all know Terea is going to probably play more higher up the pitch. So obviously, Granite Xhaka has a big job to do, and again, you know Zaha, Townsend, and a couple of them Palace man. Palace have got ballers as well. Let's not underestimate Crystal Palace. So, Xhaka needs to be on point and hopefully his distribution can be on point. Mateo Guendouzi, the maestro, I like to call him. For me, he definitely is like the first man on the team sheet. No hesitation. This kid has got so much talent in him. It's unreal. The way he could pick out a pass... The way he's so confident, even making runs. And he knows the smart runs, the, the runs that will draw fouls, that, you know, that will bring the team. He likes to shout and tries to get get up the fans. The one thing I do that does worry me about Guendouzi a bit is how he starts the game. Because sometimes he can hold on to the ball for way too long. And he, well, sometimes he doesn't look sure. And then he starts holding up the ball. But once he starts to find some rhythm and he's, I don't know, it's like something snaps into him and he starts looking at space, he just thinks, fuck it. Do you know what I mean? So for me, he we need him tomorrow, along with Danny Sabayos. Sabayos, I think, you know, him and Guendouzi, that partnership's not too bad. I don't mind seeing it more, if I'm honest. I'll give Unai Emery that in the credit. But for me, Sabayos needs to be playing deep, I mean, further from the centre mids. He needs to be playing in that hole. It's as simple as that. So, Danny Ceballos, for me, is right there playing in front of Grandizzi and Xhaka. Um, Nicolas Pepe, there on the right. I think this has to be a game he needs to turn up for. I'm not putting pressure on him. I know it sounds like I am, but let's be real. He's got two goals and three kicks. Um... On Thursday, I'm sure that's gassed him up. That's got him some. That's got him. That's got him it. Do you know what I mean? Giving a little bit more confidence. He did show good spells at Sheffield United. Like he's really slowly coming into his own. So hopefully he's at home, and hopefully the fans, you know, can all get behind him and help him transition in this game. Um, alongside him, I'm gonna pick. Um, sorry, let's start with the opposite wing. I'm going to go with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. And the only reason why I'm going to go with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is because Alexander Lacazette is back fit and I want him starting up top because I feel like having Abba and Lacazette there, they offer something different. You see it last season. You see the way they were linking up. You see the, the way they were counter-attacking. One feeds off the other. And of course, you, they, they're trying to bring Pepe into the equation. Now, that's another thing you want to bring up. Lacazette is that key link for our forwards to go and attack these teams. So, and, and you have to look at Aubameyang. The amount of goals he got last season out there on the on the wing. Come on, man. Come on. Like, if you, do you know what I mean? So, if we could get the motion right with, with Black Alexander Lacazette there, then Aubameyang, I'm sure, will start to be scoring goals and hopefully is putting up some assists. Do you know what I mean? For hopefully Pepe or Lacazette. Do you know what I mean? And we got Kieran Tierney there as well to support him. So that's too pacey there on the left. Do you know what I mean? And again, like I said, with Alexander Lacazette, he's a strong character. He's he's literally like the heartbeat of the team, I'd say so. Do you know what I mean? Like he, He'll get into tackles. If he loses the ball, he'll try his hardest to get back at it. There is times he does moan and, you know, if he does overreact, there is that. But it is what it is with Lacazette, man. He's definitely, like, the the heartbeat of the team, man. Telling you. So, on the bench, of course, you know, we got the likes of Gabriel Martinelli, um, Joe Willock. I feel he needs to be on the bench because, like, he hasn't really shown much good signs of... Um, um, he hasn't really had any good games um, in the last two, sorry. Oh, pardon me. He hasn't um had very good performances, that's what I was meant to say. Um which I think he definitely needs to be on the bench for this. Um 
do you know what I mean? Would you now this one I'm I'm just thinking. Now guys, let's segue in, into this. So we all know the Meza Urzel situation and we know that Una Emery doesn't like Urzel. It's facts. Them two legitimately have beef. I'm not coming out and saying I know every shit. But from what we see, we know there's something wrong between the two. They don't like each other. It's clear that Emery doesn't fancy Urzel. As Urzel's not even making the bench. Do you know what I mean? It's not even like he's making a bench. He's just not coming on. He's just not making a bench. And at a point, like I said earlier in the video, where we lack creativity, and we all know Meza Urzel, but we all know Meza Urzel. Sometimes he shows up when he wants. It's not as consistent as we all like it to be. He's been here six years. And, you know, I just want the best for any player that plays in a Russell shirt. And I might get out a lot of people, you know, like Shaq or Mustafi or Kalasanach or Socrates and even Ozil at times. But Ozil wants to be at Arsenal. He's come out. He's always said he's Arsenal from through pretty much. He doesn't want to leave, etc. And we all know it's just this war between Emery and Ozil. Boy, it might go on for a while. So... What would you guys do? Would you put Ozil back into the squad? Or would you do you applaud the manager for freezing Mr. Ozil out of the squad right now? Leave it in the comment section, guys. I would love to hear from everybody that's watching this video. So, let's give you the predicted scoreline. And like I said, I'm not really too confident. In the last couple of games, Arsenal showed me that, yes, we... we did come back against Vittorio, but again, like I said, Pepe free kick, uh, do you know what I mean? It just wasn't good for us defensively. We looked absolutely poor. Um, Sheffield United, it looked like we didn't want it. Sheffield United looked like they were up for it. Um, and of course, we gave them that easy last goal, and I feel like we were looking so dead in set pieces. It's unreal. If Palace gets set pieces, you know they got some athletic athleticism. Enabled to jump over the defenders and time that and get that in. Yes, we had the likes of David Luiz and Socrates, but listen, man, they're strong. But at the same time, these guys know when to give them give a penalty or pull a shot or two. You know what I'm saying? So for me, this is tough, man. This is tough. Like I don't. I think I think this is gonna be a close one, and I'm gonna. Put my heart out there. I'm going to go over 2-1 win to Arsenal. I think Pepe hopefully will come good. Lacazette, like, he's, like I said, him there with Guendouzi, Aubameyang, Pepe. Like, come on, man. It's crazy. It's a bias in the mix. Do you know what I mean? But our defensive issues are the problem. But again, like I said, Kieran Tini's there. Chambers on the right. I don't mind Chambers. Then, with, then I'm not as bothered because I know what the opposition have that my defenders don't do you know what I mean and David Luiz and Socrates just definitely need to be on point it's as simple as that so guys I hope you enjoyed the preview here um let me know what you think in the comment section of this video let me know what your predicted score line is for Arsenal versus Crystal Palace and also let me know your thoughts on the Emery situation do you think the manager do you think this is the right manager or not? Do you agree with anything I said? Go back to my previous videos and check out the content. See what I'm saying. You never know. So anyways, guys, like I said, if you want to contact me, all my links are in the description box. Make sure you like this video, share it. And of course, hit that subscribe button. So Gunas, I'm out. And Arsenal, hopefully, we can go leave the Emirates, go home with some free points. Peace.